You're listening to the Mid-Career GPS Podcast, episode 95. We put a lot on ourselves often, high achieving people, especially. I could do it all. I could do it all. Like I have to do it all. To, you know, I'm high achieving. A lot of it's clutter. It, a lot of it's clutter. And if we could get rid of the clutter, then we could be more in our flow and we could have clarity and we could have focus and we could live more the life we're meant to live. After a 30-year career in sales, Trisha Sticka knew that regardless of industry or calling, building relationships is everyone's key to success. For Trisha, it doesn't matter what you do. What matters is how you are showing up to do it. Today, you will meet my friend and career transformation coach, Trisha Sticka. In this episode, you'll hear her story about what it means to get unstuck how to break free from your comfort zone at whatever point in your career and create the results you want. This is the Mid-Career GPS Podcast, and I'm your host, John Nerrill. I help mid-career professionals who are feeling undervalued and underutilized show up to find the job they love or love the job they have using my proven four-step formula. It's time to start building your mid-career GPS. So let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the podcast. Before I begin, I want to apologize for my voice. I've been under the weather for about a week now and was recently diagnosed with COVID. I'm quarantining with some minor symptoms, and thankfully, I am double vaccinated and boosted. But this is a perfect reminder for all of us that we need to take care of ourselves, stay hydrated, get plenty of rest, and just be kinder to our bodies. Personally, I've been going at a fast pace for the last few months, and once again, I got the message that it is time for me to slow down. But let's be honest, my voice tends to get a little bit raspy, and it can be a little bit funny, so laugh along with me during this episode but I hope you enjoy my guest today and the message we have for you. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. If you have taken advantage of the reduced prices on my books at Amazon this month, I want to remind you that I have several free mid-career GPS resources available for you on the homepage of my website at johnnarrell.com. All you need to do is go and click the link, enter your email address, and you're going to get all of the reflection questions from my book, Your Mid-Career GPS, Four Steps to Figuring Out What's Next. You're going to get the same job search tracker I use with all my clients, and you're going to get an Excel spreadsheet with a pro and con list to help you weigh out the advantages and disadvantages for any job offer or opportunity you're considering. So make sure to visit johnnarrell.com for more information. But now, on to our conversation. Trisha Sticka is a dynamo, and I wanted to interview her because she's a great example of what it means to pivot when a career chapter closes and you're ready to start another one. You do not need to have a 30-year career in a given industry to start your next chapter. You can do that right now. You can write your next career chapter anytime you want. You have the power and the agency to determine where your career is headed as you find your purpose and live passionately doing it. So I want you to meet Trisha Sticka. I am Trisha Sticka. I'm a career transformation coach and I'm fairly new. I started my business about six months ago. After coming off a 30-year career of sales, relationship management, and leadership, I live in the central New York area. I'm happily married for 25 years to my husband, and I have two grown sons. We will get to Trisha's career transformation in a bit, but let's go back to when Trisha was younger and what she wanted to be growing up. You'll learn that her sweet tooth led her down a pretty great road. Oh, I love this question. So what I wanted to be growing up when I was young, eight or nine years old, I I actually always wanted to be a businesswoman. (laughs) I used to set up uh, like a little retail store in my 
bedroom and I sold my things and my only customers were my mom, dad, and my sister, but I loved it because I had my editing machine and I had my typewriter and I was just like, just very businessy. And, um, as I got a little bit older, uh, my father was a candy wholesaler and I would actually buy candy from him and go sell it in the front yard. And I'll tell you why I made a killing for, you know, a 10 year old. So it's always been around sales and relationships and business. I've always wanted to be in business. Trisha earned her entrepreneurial chops as a kid and learned that running a business and making a profit was, for the lack of a better phrase, kind of fun. But how much did all of that impact her college life and the early days of her career? I actually went to a business school to become a medical transcriptionist. I took an accounting class and fell in love. And I got my... uh, degree in accounting. So yes, it was really always around business. It it started a little medical, but then it was business. So I went to school for accounting, graduated in accounting, ended up working in a bank and then moved in, uh, you know, made a couple hops from there, always in business and always really enjoyed it. I asked Tricia what she truly enjoyed about being in sales for 30 years. As you listen to Tricia tell this part of her story, You'll hear some pauses. This happens when we dig more deeply into our career stories and identify what's important to us. I didn't want to chop this section up because you can hear Trisha leaning into her answers. And this is what we must do when we build our mid-career GPS. Relationships, connecting people with other people or connecting people with solutions. It's that connection, which I've learned you know, over the past several years, that is one of my top core values connection. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? I think it came from the joy I get being around people, you know, getting to know people intimately. Um, I am an extrovert. I feel like that's my it's part of my purpose is Mm -hmm. getting to know people and connecting people I just get jazzed up connecting people when we're in a room and I feel like somebody's being left out I bring them in like come on come on in with us I just I love that so were you the kid in school that like saw the kids sitting by themselves and you pulled them over yeah, I, I, th- I think I did. I know I do it now. I, you know, like at my gym, I always want to make sure the new folks are well, feel welcomed, um, part of the ambassador committee. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it makes sure I'm, I sit with them. I go through it with them. I don't know, just it's very inclusive. I just, I've got this drive for inclusivity. On some level, each and every one of us has a sales component to our job. And if you're in a career transition, you may feel as if you have to sell yourself to get that new job. And this is why Trisha's answer is crucial to building your mid-career GPS. But it led me to ask Trisha, what did you sell? I sold candy (laughs) first. And then actually garbage pail kids were a real big hit. So I sold those. Uh, I, when I was in banking, I was a commercial lender, so I sold essentially sold financing packages. And then when I moved into, uh, I guess, my longest career in a telecom organization, I sold uh, communication solutions to businesses. It's not surprising that Trisha's early ventures were to sell candy. She followed in her dad's footsteps. But being in sales doesn't mean you have to be that sleazy car salesperson or believe that sales are all about money. There is no question that some salespeople make a ton of money and they are extremely good at what they do, but they're good at it because they are doing precisely what Trisha is describing. Sales is about building relationships and how you show up to create them. That is, I'm so glad you asked that question. Sales does have a perception and and that's what it is is a perception it's a perception that those people are in it for the money 
I, I have found the most successful salespeople don't go after the money. They go after doing what's right. They go after a, a, a win-win scenario. I think that, um, I, you know, I'll say when I was in sales and a lot of my fellow sales professionals, um, sometimes the, the, the best thing we can do is tell the client we're not the right fit. You know, just and it's it's John. It's about being genuine and authentic with yourself and doing it for the right reasons. A lot like career transition and career <laughs> transformation. <laughs> I had to segue, but it really is. Yeah. It's about doing and feeling what's right. It may not give you the the results you want at the time, but in the long run, it it pays off far more than it would have by just going after that dollar. Like any job, it has its ups and downs. So I asked Trisha what the most challenging thing was for her about being in sales. Well, uh, rejection, <laughs> which happens a lot in sales. How'd you handle it? Well, not good at first, not well at first, uh, but and, and completely transparent. It's still hard. <laughs> it's still hard to hear the no. But I, I, I'm a pretty positive person and I reframed it for a not now. I reframed it in that um, if they said yes and they weren't ready, it wouldn't benefit either party, customer, vendor. Um, it's got to be mutual. It's got to truly be something that both parties desire. So it was reframing. I guess I was using coaching skills before I knew what coaching skills were. You know, it was my perception. It was my view that, this no right now is making room for some for the yes, a different yes. Thank you for that, Trisha. Hearing no is all about making room for the yes. Think about that. How often have you struggled with hearing no in your career? You didn't get the job offer. You didn't get the promotion. And you're frustrated, angry, and upset and wondering when it's going to be your turn. This is where resiliency is vital to building your mid-career GPS. Oftentimes, it's just in that now. My, I got such great joy when I was in telecom sales, when I worked with a client for many, many years, and we continued to revisit it, but it wasn't the right time. 90% of the time, we ended up working together. Why? Because it was just about a relationship. And again, I, I just enjoy meeting people, getting to know people on a deeper level. And, and that's what I was going after, is just getting to know people. And they, and they saw that in me. They saw that authenticity. And they just, they wanted to stay connected. When I said I wanted to touch base, they would call me back. And not all the time. But a lot of them would call me back because it was really just about getting to know each other. Also, like to try to give value. Like if I read an article or I hear about something that really connects with them, I keep them in the loop and I, I, I toss it their way. Hey, you know, to a car dealer, check this out. I ran into this piece of information, thought it might help you. I, I do that right now. And, and, and John, I mean, what you're doing with this podcast is exactly that. It's giving value to your audience, expecting nothing in return. Right. When you build your mid-career GPS that is rooted in value and service, you adopt a mindset where you are always giving. And I want you to know somebody wants that. And admittedly, this can be difficult when things are not going your way. Whether you're a career professional looking for your next advancement opportunity or an entrepreneur looking to grow your business, I want you to ask yourself this question. Where? Are you adding value? And when you can answer that question about where you're adding value, you are then able to answer this question. How do my skills transfer into something else? It was my intuition. It was my gut. I just continued to get drawn to this world more and more heavily as time went on. What attracted me to it was the impact I make on people. And, and, I, and I did it at my, in my career, all through my career. You know, I, 
I tended to be the person that people came to when they were struggling. And, you know, when they had an aha moment and they walked out and they felt better and they felt motivated, that lights me up. So I decided a few years ago to actually get professional training and certification in this. And the more I dove into that, the more I realized I can make a bigger, I can make a bigger impact on this world through starting my own practice. Trisha got certified through the same coach certification school I attended, IPEC, the Institute for Professional Excellence in Coaching. And like me, she did it while she was working full time. She saw value in building these skills she could bring back to her team and organization to help make them better. This is why we invest in ourselves. You may be questioning right now whether or not you want to invest in a coach, go back to school, get another certification, or pay for a certain training you want. What I want to offer you here is what kind of value will it give you as you move to whatever is next in your career? We all make these kinds of decisions, and these decisions are what help us get us out of our comfort zones. One of Trisha's areas of expertise is that she helps her clients step out of their comfort zones and take action. And she's got a great story about it, too. Well, I want to share a favorite story with you, and I think I might be known around my area for this. So I was asked to come, I was on the board of directors for a leadership organization in my area. And I was asked to come speak about um, being in your comfort zone. And I got out of my comfort zone and I literally put a big box around me and I walked out and presented in the box. And it was about getting out of the box. And you know what? I still have people till this day come to me and say, I remember that. So it's, I'm a visual person and I'm connecting it all now, but I think that visual and me just getting really corny and really out of my comfort zone, probably planted a seed with others. Where are you making those impressions with your network and inside your professional circles? So people get to know you for who you are and what you do. We make those impressions when we identify what lights us up or excites us about the work we get to do, not the work you have to do, but the work you get to do. It's really paying attention to your feelings and what excites you. And this is, this is actually an exercise I do through my program is just, just what excites you. So my tip for your audience is just during the day, pay attention to where you get that feeling like you're, you you know, you're sitting up stronger, you're getting a smile on your face. Like, what are you doing when that happens? But if you are unsure where to begin or where you can add the most value, you might feel a bit stuck. Listen as Trisha shares a few suggestions to help you get unstuck so you can take that step toward whatever you want. Do it small. Take a very, very, very small step. I think sometimes we fail because we try to take on too much. We do too much. So someone who's in that situation, John, I would say to, maybe it's just reaching out to someone they admire and say, hey, I'm stuck. Can you help me? Something little little, little baby steps, because that baby step will motivate you to get to that next baby step. Picking up something about, you know, what you're struggling with, reading, listening to a podcast. Um, You know what? It might even be just turning on your favorite motivational song to just start shifting your energy into something that makes you feel good. You may be feeling really, really crappy. There's likely something that's going to make you feel good. Push yourself to do that. I got really curious with Trisha about what has her stuck right now. What has me stuck right now is the the, the roller coaster of entrepreneurship. I'm, I'm I think I'm on the downhill slide. Just spent uh, several weeks 
preparing and launching my website and my program. And there was a lot of energy put into that. And now it's done. And, and here's where I'm stuck. I just expected the connections to come in and just come to me. And you know what? That's not happening. <laughs> so guess happened what? happened to me too. My, right. That's my expectations. But, but I'm all, you know, again, thank God coaches, we learn so much about ourselves. It was my expectations. I should have set them differently. So that's, that's right now. That's where I'm stuck. You know, I've had a couple of days where I just didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to sit and do nothing. My friends, let me let you in a little bit. Just because we are coaches and entrepreneurs doesn't mean that we don't feel stuck or frustrated. I can relate so much to what Trisha is talking about here. I've been down that road and I've learned what I needed to do to get out of it. After all, it is how we stretch and grow. There are some mid-career professionals who are attracted to starting a side hustle or building a business because there is an allure that this life can be so exciting. You make your own schedule. You only have to work a few hours a week. Clients are going to automatically flood your inbox wanting your services and your products only to find out that it's kind of the furthest from the truth. As I reflect on being five years in my business, I can absolutely see all of the hard work of my business, but things haven't always come easily. And admittedly, when I've had to take a few days off this week because I've been sick, stuff still needed to get done. With tissues in hand, (laughs) it wasn't very glamorous, but I got things done. It's what we do. And it's what we all do when we are faced with that deadline or things that need to be completed. But here's the thing, we do it by eliminating this. I can see, for lack of a better term, waste, where people are maybe doing things they don't even need to do. Um, We put a lot on ourselves often, high achieving people, especially, I could do it all, I could do it all, like I have to do it all, you know, I'm high achieving. A lot of it's clutter. A lot of it's clutter. And if we could get rid of the clutter, then we could be more in our flow and we could have clarity and we could have focus and we could live more the life we're meant to live. Where's your clutter? What's holding you back from getting things done? What's holding you back from getting things you want to get done? What kind of story are you telling yourself right now that keeps you from making the progress you want? I saw a panel on social media last week and it said, do you want six months of progress or six months of excuses? So I asked Trisha, with everything that is going on in the world right now, why is now the right time for people to evaluate what's going on in their careers? Because I think we have, as a world shifted to a more adaptable mindset. We've had to adapt more these past two years than we ever have. So I almost think there's a level of confidence that people have to say, hey, I made it through, you know, having my kids behind me working on their homework while I'm working. You know, I had adapted to the fact that I couldn't see my parents in a nursing home. You know, we've, it's like a strength and courage and confidence that we've got. And so I think we see that we can, we can do more than we ever thought we could. Whatever you have going on right now, let's acknowledge that your career is important to you. It allows you to do the things you want to do outside of work and honor your responsibilities, such as taking care of your family, paying your bills, donating to charities, having some fun money, all the fun things that you want to do. And so I asked Trisha, as we continue to put a spotlight on our career progression and development on this podcast, what advice she could share with you to help you build your mid-career GPS? Start really digging into who you are and who you're meant to be, not what you do. I think too often we are doers, we're always doers, but let's be, let's be who we are in everything we do. So I start, it it really is about starting to do the internal work, starting to understand 
which we sometimes have a hard time understanding what our superpowers are, what our strengths are. I have an exercise that I ask people to like map out their timeline from age zero to age 80 and talk about the highlights and what made them highlights. What what made this such a great success or what made this a challenge? That's a really cool exercise for people to start identifying who they are and who they're meant to be. If you've enjoyed my conversation with Trisha Sticka today and want to connect with her, listen to how Trisha helps her clients and how you can connect with her. I help executive women striving for fulfillment to uncover their purpose and passion so that they can transform their lives through careers that they love. I help them through my process. I call it my 4A process. Align, aware, awake, and act. The first step align is we create time and space and the foundation to be able to do the work that we do over the next six months. Second step is aware. This is where we use that exercise I just mentioned, among others, to really understand who we, who we are and who we're meant to be. When we awake, we give ourselves permission to dream and believe that anything is possible. And we visualize what life will be like. And then we act, we create a roadmap to get us to the life of our dreams, to transform our lives. So my website is Trisha com, or they can email me at Trisha at trishastica.com, keeping it simple. I'm also on LinkedIn as well. Before we wrapped up, I asked Trisha if there was anything else she wanted to share. And this is what she said. I would simply add that um, we need to celebrate who we are. We need to celebrate our strengths. I I don't think we always look at the greatness in ourselves. And really that is, that's a first step to any type of transition or transformation. Each one of us has so much to offer. Let's own it and let's share it. Celebrating who you are and what you do is an integral step to helping you navigate toward whatever is next. You have something to offer that no one else can. It makes you professionally unique and valuable to your team, organization, and clients. If you haven't had a chance to listen to the last two episodes, I invite you to go back and listen to them. They will help you work on identifying where you are most valuable and align your value to your brand and your reputation. I want to thank Trisha Sticker for sharing her story and career path with us today. There will come a time when you will consider transferring your skills into something else. For Trisha, she took 30 years of experience building relationships and sales and parlayed that into her coaching business. How are you leveraging your skills or transferring them? I hope you'll connect with Trisha through her website, email, or LinkedIn, and you can find her contact information in the show notes. But if you want some help navigating toward whatever is next, I'd like to offer you that my private Facebook group, Your Mid-Career GPS, is what you need right now. It is your place to join a community of like-minded people who are all trying to figure out whatever that next step or chapter is in their career. Some are actively job-seeking. Some are well-established in their jobs, but still looking to grow. So you are invited to join my private Facebook group, Your Mid-Career GPS, and kindly make sure that you answer the membership questions so I can approve you right away. And lastly, you are welcome to go to Amazon to get copies of my books, Show Up, Six Strategies to Lead a More Energetic and Impactful Career, as well as Your Mid-Career GPS, Four Steps to Figuring Out What's Next. Those books will help you figure out whatever next steps you want to take, be it the logistics, such as the resume, LinkedIn, interviewing, and networking components, as well as your mindset as you navigate toward whatever is next for you in your career. So until next time, my friends, remember this. You build your mid-career GPS one mile or one step at a time, and how you show up matters. 
Make it a great rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's episode and don't want to miss another one, follow on Apple Podcasts or wherever you usually listen and kindly remember to rate and review. Visit johnnarrell.com to download your free job search tracker and other free mid-career GPS resources right there on my homepage so you can start building your mid-career GPS. Come join my private Facebook group at Your Mid-Career GPS and join an amazing community of people like you who are all working to figure out whatever is next for themselves and their careers. And don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn and follow me on social at John Narrow Coaching. I'll see you next time.